Okay, Bob, Homeland. Um, we got a big reveal this week, Bob. The whole thing with Carrie in the hospital and getting recruited by a lawyer for Iran. An undercover operation by Saul and Carrie. My question to you, Bob. Impressive feat of storytelling or cheap trick? You know, it's a, it's a spectrum, Logan, but it's leaning more towards the cheap trick side. I, 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 it's, it's definitely not extreme one or the other, but it's maybe close to the middle because I want to be nice to the writers and I see what they're trying to do, but I, I think that they're a little, a little more on the cheap trick side than the other side. <laughs> All right. Uh, for me, my first reaction was to be impressed and think, wow, nicely done, nicely done. But after thinking about it, I think the show is a little too manipulative. I mean, Carrie was too into her role as a as psych patient. Um, even when there's no audience to play to, except us as the viewers. Alan Sepinwall actually had a great analysis on this. Why did she freak out when her parents didn't come to the hearing? Why was she on the verge of tears with her back turned to the lawyer? That was just for our benefit. That was to, to trick us, not to help her in her actual con. So I'm a bit annoyed, and I have to call cheap trick, too. Yeah, well, and why did she bang her head against the window when nobody was watching her? It's just is that part right. of the, like, I need a bleedy forehead because otherwise this isn't believable enough for this undercover. Yeah. So uh, what what does become more interesting, though, in light of that reveal, though, is the uh, the message Carrie has kept trying to get to Saul. That, you know, tell Saul I give up. She can't do it anymore. I, I know you think I'm crazy. Just get this message to Saul. Uh, you know, it used to seem like she was begging for mercy and saying she would be an obedient little puppy dog. But now we see she was basically trying to tap out and bail on this whole sting operation say, I can't go through with it. And so that was interesting the way that was reframed, I thought. Yeah, um, that's true. But I, I still feel like I, I feel like I need to go back and rewatch things or um, I was just so vested in Carrie's psychological issues. And, and she was on medication and not on medication. Um I'm just confused what's real and what's not. So I, I agree with that point, holding it in isolation, but with all the other variables, it wasn't enough for me. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so just to get some of the recap duties out of the way, um, you know, she's in the hospital going crazy. Here's a woman screaming. Um, the judge, even though her hearing seems to go well, the judge ends up denying her release because Dar Adal puts in a writ saying she's a security risk under Saul's directions, which just, you know, adds more to the plot. Uh, but she ends up being sprung after all, and the reason I bring it up is because she's she's sprung by this, uh, this lawyer who's trying to meet with her, and she finally agrees. She discovers that her life's being messed with, her car's missing, grass has been frozen. She even calls Virgil, who has dudes at his house listening in, and he gives her a coded warning, say hi to your mom. Uh, but she finally meets with the lawyer who wants her to tell his clients about how the CIA found those six guys they killed, and she agrees but she's only willing to talk face-to-face -face with the client, just as she and Saul planned, I find out. And uh, at the end of that scene with Carrie and Saul, that was a pretty great scene, I thought, when uh, she was breaking down and Saul was trying to comfort her and praise her at the same time. And I am happy to have them on the same team again and see their relationship back in full effect. No, I totally agree with you there. I'm glad this episode is behind us, and now we can get to the... The, the title of this episode, in fact, is Game On, and I was like, yeah, series on, finally, let's get <laughs> cracking here. We're a third of the way through, and now we're just over the pleasantries of manipulation, so now let's do some real stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, it seems like all this could have been put in an episode or two, but I guess it took four. Fine, whatever, yeah. but Game On now. Yeah. Although... As counterbalance, we also had more Dana this week <laughs> with the reveal in that storyline, too. Uh, she springs Leo from the treatment center. They run off. Jess gets harassed because they say it's because of Brody that Dana's a bad influence. Uh, they even trade their car in at a chop shop. But we discover that Leo is a murderer who's in treatment as sort of a prosecutorial bargain of some kind. Uh, you know, I keep hoping the Dana stuff will fade away, but it looks like they're just gearing up for something more. Yeah, did they just not have enough material for the real interesting parts? Because this is just like, I don't know, uh, a totally different <laughs> drama than the other stuff in some ways. And Dana, and they, did you notice how they sort of left it open a little bit too? They're like, well, it, it, we're not sure if it's completely murder, but he's probably not a good guy because he, he uh, probably murdered his brother or it was an assisted suicide. We're not sure, but dun dun dun, she's with this guy. And That's true. And they say he wasn't charged with homicide if he agreed to go in there, and so, you know, that doesn't mean he was proven guilty or anything like that. So, yeah, it just seemed like 
this is this is the thing that it seems like bothers you less, but I just have to wa wag my finger and point out that uh, the probability here, and I know it's Homeland, the probability of everything is <laughs> improbable, but th this is a side I story. The just CIA, felt, for heaven's sake. <laughs> yeah, this just felt so manufactured to me by comparison. I'm cool with like low probability CIA stuff happening because this is great fiction, but like a teenage drama with a murderer runaway trade in cars, you know, off the grid type story. Wow. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Too yeah. much for me. I certainly in no way want to defend its plausibility, but just what annoys me is like, why do I care? I, I don't get why I care about the story, and that's what bugs me most. So either way, wag the finger from both of us. Yep, yep. Um, back to Dara Dahl. Uh, did I say okay. his name right? Uh, yeah. He, uh, so Saul is playing him, right? I mean, oh, he's, totally. He's totally being used as a pawn to, to make it seem like Carrie's really being thrown through this because the Iranians need to believe this and they're watching her too. Um, and, and I guess Saul has his, uh, his, his agent also from Iran or somewhere in the Middle East that's... Farah, that trusts more, Farah, yeah. He trusts more than Dara Dahl. And, um, I'm feeling like I want to see more of how the CIA operates because it seems like they're sort of glossing over any sort of... Um, organizational structure. You hear hints of like the, the agency's weaker. It's weaker since the attack, but really it's really only three people since the attack, uh, it feels like in some ways. I, yeah, it I wanna... feels like they're just, they've got some, a suite, like three rooms and an office space and a mini mall or something like that. <laughs> the whole CIA from there is what it feels like. <laughs> they're like managing the CIA on top of like a lingerie shop or something, you know, it's just... <laughs> Yeah, it's all his time just to spend all his, his time working with the, the Fara on this one case and uh, and secretly managing Carrie because he has something else to do as head of the CIA. <laughs> yeah, so there's a little bit of um, I don't know. That, I guess they to, to their credit, early on there was the the in the first or second episode where they killed they coordinated the strike and killed six people and there was a lot of people in the room and um, that was like yeah homeland. But now we're like. Homeland, where are you? I mean, I love these characters, but flesh it out a little bit more. Fill in some of the gaps. Don't make it seem like there's only three people in the in the drama. <laughs> yeah, I would love that way more than anything to do with Dana, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, you did hit on Far, and it is interesting that that they talk about that Iranian soccer player. He's dead, and Dar Dal walks in right then. Who's dead? And it's pretty obvious that Saul like totally deflects, which has to be a clue for Dar Dal. But um, right. no one. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'll be waiting upstairs in our third office that we have. <laughs> right. Um, we're back to having no Brody again. He doesn't really fit in anymore, it seems. I wish the show would make up its mind and either include him or ditch him, but so far, limbo. Yep, yep. It's kind of binging Brody. You get him all at once or not at all. Yeah. Well, um, I think we're nearing the end of this recap. Anything else you want to bring up or you want to hit your final take? Do you want Mike and Jess to get back together for like the fourth time? <laughs> yeah, why not? For some reason, I like Mike. Mike's good for saw, Jess. Yeah, I saw him again too, and I'm like, yeah, make that happen. Throw in another sex scene, whatever. Come on, it's totally cool. Yeah, why not? Um, Brody can be mad when he finally shows up again. Let's recycle something that sort of worked, even if it's the third or fourth time. <laughs> we get it. Right. right. Um, anyway, I'm glad... We came back from our Brody excursion on a minute by minute by basis. By the way, I did enjoy my time with this episode more than I did last week, but I'm worried the show a little too pleased with itself with the big reveal this week when in reality mm. it was only partially successful at best. Um, but you know, I, I feel like you're this way too. But I'm I'm usually happy to give the benefit of the doubt and not rush to judgment. But it's not a good sign if the show thinks it's on top of its game and this is what it gives us as the best it can do. So I'm worrying about things spinning apart coming up here. But, you know, let's see what happens. Yeah, same for me. So far, uh, it doesn't look like the prospects are great for this being, uh, having a chance of getting back to Homeland Season 1 territory and even Homeland Season 2 territory, which is a notch down, but still really good for me. Um, it's on the fence. It can it can reach that level, but uh, it, needs, it needs to wow me a little more. So we'll see. I'm enjoying it, though. All right. 